A lot of activity around this building that has a hole in the middle of it as a result of yesterday's plane crash. It started when trucks arrived to put a fence around the... Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shannon Powell. We hit temperatures we haven't seen in 14 years. Who walked inside that apartment or was invited into the apartment, killed them both, and then walked out? Today's decision was one that most people didn't think would happen before both men had their second trials. But the prosecution in this case made a request to the court that set this all in motion, a request that they knew could have both of these men walking out of jail today. And that is exactly what happened for Robert Springsteen and Michael Scott. Michael Scott's July 6th trial was postponed, and that set the stage for his release. It also allowed Robert Springsteen, who is also charged in the 1991 Joker Chop case, to finally go home. Obviously, we are pleased, um, and I think the judge was very fair in his ruling uh, that they, these boys get their freedom back in exchange for that motion to continue. Even though Springsteen was not in court, his attorney says a trial sooner than later is preferred. But Judge Mike Lynch granted the prosecution its motion to postpone the case and release the men. The DA's office wants to determine whose DNA was found in two of the victims of the 1991 killings. DNA that did not match either defendant. The judge gave them the extra time, but with the stipulation allowing a reduced bond, which meant Scott could walk out of this door. But instead of heading back to a cell, he could go home to his wife. The big day will be when 12 people declare my husband not guilty so that this, is, this nightmare for our family is over and the state can start pursuing the actual perpetrators and give those girls' families some peace and the truth. So five hours later, she walked out of the jail for the first time in 10 years, hand in hand with her husband with a quiet smile. Springsteen stood with his attorney but made it clear he is happy with today's decision. It's wonderful, and I'd like to thank God and my families and my attorney for this opportunity. Now, the release of Scott and Springsteen did come with some conditions. They cannot leave Travis County. They cannot have any contact with the victims, families, or any witnesses in this case. They cannot have drugs, alcohol, or any type of weapons. Now, their next hearing is set for 9 o'clock on August the 12th. Live at the Justice Center, Shannon Powell, KXAN, Austin News. A lot of people who are driving past the Capitol building this evening may not realize exactly what happened here earlier today, but they will soon find out that a young man stood on the front steps, and no one knows why just yet. But according to DPS, he started shooting. Pictures say a lot. A man DPS officials say pulled out a gun on the Capitol steps and opened fire, not aiming at anyone, but forcing quick action. DPS troopers immediately took him into custody. He has been transported to the Travis County Sheriff's Office Jail. 24-year-old Faustus Cardenas is from the Houston area. He allegedly dropped his gun after getting off about half a dozen shots. Troopers found it near him. He had his hands in his pocket, and when the officer ran out there, the officer told him to take his hands out of his pocket, and he went like this. And then they threw him on the ground, and they put their knee in, on his back, and they handcuffed him. Elizabeth Holloman and everyone else who was in the Capitol was eventually told to leave the building. During a nearly four-hour lockdown, law enforcement went to every floor and through every office looking for weapons, explosives, or even another suspect. Eventually, DPS determined that Cardenas acted alone. DPS troopers and the Texas Rangers are investigating and will um, be looking into what happened, trying to determine what the, what the situation was that made him decide to do that. While he was being questioned, many tourists had to simply tour the Capitol grounds instead of looking inside. Now, a few hours after the suspect was taken into custody, troopers surrounded this Toyota Corolla that you see here. The car is on the west side of the building in an off-street parking space. DPS believes this is the car that Cardenas used to get to the Capitol. So dogs were brought in and troopers looked through the windows. Now, they have placed a state trooper right next to the car. They won't allow anyone to go up to the car. 
most likely because they are waiting to get a search warrant in order to actually search through the car as well as take it off of the grounds. Reporting live at the state capitol, Shannon Powell, KXAN Austin News. Dozens of people left without a home after a four alarm fire tears through a North Austin apartment complex. Investigators say smoldering smoking materials started that blaze. Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. I'm Shannon Powell. The fire broke out around six this morning at the Edge Creek Apartments in the 1200 block of Metro Boulevard near Cedar Bend. Thankfully, no one was injured. One of our editors lives in that complex and he took these pictures at the height of the fire. Now you can see the bright flames shooting up over the tops of trees. KXAN's Mary Lee spoke to residents who woke up to the sounds of sirens this morning. The Red Cross is helping the displaced find new places to live. Now, in addition to fire, smoke and water damage, the building partially collapsed, destroying things even further. Now, fire investigators say the blaze caused more than $3 million in damage, $2.5 million to the building and about $700,000 to the contents inside. And in northeast Dallas, firefighters battled a six alarm blaze at a condominium complex on Saturday. It took 130 firefighters and nearly 50 trucks five hours to bring the fire under control. Two people had to be treated for smoke inhalation and close to 100 people are now homeless because of the fire. Investigators believe the fire started in a first floor dumpster and spread to the other floors through the garbage chute. Yesterday's fire was the third major apartment fire in Dallas in just a week. Texas farmers waiting for drought aid will have to continue to wait. That's because $3 billion from the Federal Farm Assistance Program won't be available until the fall. Well, Leslie, you can look behind me here, and it looks as if it was just a normal day here at Maynard High School, but it was anything but a normal day. We are talking about very little learning taking place in the early part of the day because of three fights that took place simultaneously, and we understand those fights started as a result of an incident that happened last Friday night. Now, you combine that with Travis County Sheriff's deputies trying to get the uh, five juveniles and two adult age suspects in custody, along with trying to get the other students under control, and it just made for a day here that some hope they won't ever see again. When the first fight broke out between two girls, there was confusion. In the cafeteria, like there was a, a group of people, like they were all fighting and everything, but it was, it was one girl fighting this one girl, this other girl, and then like a couple more of them came and they started jumping her. Jimmy Bueno says it turned into chaos right in front of his eyes and several other fights happened inside Manor High. It was pretty bad. It, it looked like a lot of people were in. And Deputies from Travis County Sheriff's Office came out by the dozens in full force. In some cases, mace was used to calm the situation before it got further out of control. Several of the students suffered the residual effects of that and they were treated summarily by EMS. No one was seriously hurt, but school officials say an outside incident on Friday night spilled over into Monday morning, disrupting the day and frightening parents who rushed to the campus. I didn't know what was going on. N no information. Lack of information is what scared me. And then I come up here and all these ambulance and SWAT team and I'm like, what the crap is going on? You know? This could be my child that gets stabbed one day or just be around, you know, this, I mean, you know, I'm sending my kids. These are good kids. We are very concerned about that. We want our schools to be a haven of safety and security for everybody. That is why once the lockdown was lifted, deputies remained and the superintendent was on hand to reassure parents all was well. Uh, we are going to have extra uh, administrators on staff at the campus. Those students who were arrested during this entire incident could face charges anywhere from starting a riot to assault because one sheriff's deputy did hurt his knee during this entire situation. Reporting live in Maynard, Shannon Powell, KXA and Austin News.